Last time on Helicool's Helipad. Okay, let's get an axle out. Now stand by for part two. Fit. The thing we're going to have to do is release the brakes. Now that we've jacked it up, pulled the axle out. Let me block the wheels first. Nothing ever rolls in here. But... That's it. I'd say that one's good. I'll put a bar under it and check it again after I get this mess cleaned up. This Dave got so out of control. <laughs> Whip that axle out of there. Well, I tell you what, good help is hard to find, isn't it? Yeah, shoot, if Phil had showed up, we'd have been done by now. Generally, you can feel it by moving it back and forth like this. Yeah. Now, if you just grab the tire, just put a hand behind it. Feel it, it moves just a little tiny bit. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Okay. Well, this is another way to check them, I and it's a way to check your cane pins and ball joints and stuff. But I'm having trouble with my tire. I don't feel anything in there, so it must be good. Well, we could have drained this first, but we've kind of forgotten till now. Make sure that this one goes in the same way. I'm not sure, but a lot of these you can put them in upside down, and that makes it go backwards. You don't want that. And this is the one with the longer swish on it, and it also should have the zero, which is rusty. right there. Sure that we, should probably right we should probably clean the rust off of these because you see this machine part of it mm -hmm. it goes into a ring that's inside the housing so that this can't spread apart well it looks like she's done draining so as soon as it's done draining get some thread sealer and put it back in so these bolts are just kind of snugged up we got our bearing race in there. So now we're doing the find the thread, find the thread. <laughs> the next day. That side looked pretty clean, this side. Rusty. You got that one? Oh, piss me off. <laughs> hey, you need help with that one, buddy? Yeah. I'll help you. I think I'll go get drunk. Well, this one feels good. 12 seconds later. Make sure you can still turn this one now that I've snugged it down. Be able to turn it with my hand, I'll guarantee you that. <coughs> nope. If you can't turn it, it's not right. Few moments later.
Okay, see that one's tight and it still turns. So. Okay. All right. You got more work to do. Eh, got it. Who said that was difficult? All right, there's the other side. Now, I don't think anything is going to drip out of here or make a mess, but just in case. Now, also, I have the actual wrench or the socket that goes on here. But Mike doesn't. So it's uh, one of these big guys. Jesus, who put this on here? It's on her German type. Yeah, fools. Uh. Okay, it's been long enough. Who did that? I don't know. That ain't supposed to be that tight. Not by a long shot. Mike's being impatient. All right, let me let me get it, buddy. Let, let me get that. And just put my weight on it then. <clears throat> Who the hell did that? I don't know. Well, no else will smack it. Precussion maintenance, right? That's if I'm not going to get it off, I'm going to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> About time you got that loose. Jeez. My technique, I use my fingers like a slicker. That way it'll drip in the housing where it's easier to clean up. <laughs> okay. So what we'll do is we'll put the torque wrench on here and we'll just put a uh, box stand wrench on this side here so it jams it so it doesn't move. All right. Yeah, we've got to find a place where it locks. How about oh, right, right there? there? Okay. And guess what? It won't fit. So you know what that means. No. <laughs> no. We gotta take those. Maybe I, I was pretty darn close. Well, let me do it. How did you figure out that this was tight enough and this is the one that needs to be tight? Well, right now I'm just checking it by hand, but I'll put the dial indicator on it and what I'll do is I'll set it up just a little tight so when I tighten it up, or a little loose so when I tighten it up, it preloads the bearings and then we end up with our correct backlash. A big caliper, you would go across these corners right here and the, there's a dimension in the Rockwell manual that tells you to adjust it to this dimension to plus or minus. And if you make it too big, then it won't fit inside the housing. And when we get that one out, we'll demonstrate that. Mike says with new bearings, use two notches of preload. And with used bearings, use one notch of preload. What's a notch? I'll show you. And don't worry, we will demonstrate this in a later part of this video series. You can preload the hell out of these bearings. In a rear end, they're normally preloaded, like in a, a car or something where they're shimmed, there's a god awful amount of preload on them. And it works just fine. Now, wheel bearings, they want wheel bearings set up with no preload, which is crazy because they're exactly the same kind of setup as this a bearing on each side, right? Why not preload them a little bit?
That's way too much. I got 40 thousandths. So, back this one off a little bit. Tighten this one up. We're getting pretty close. There's about 18. So I put my two notches preload in there. Does that make sense? I put my two notches of preload in there. I got 19 thousandths. So I went one notch on that side, one notch on this side. And now I have 15 thousandths. Which is right where it should be, right? Well, I'm gonna check it in multiple places. Because remember when we checked it and we took it apart, it was 18 in one spot and 8 in another. Yeah, yeah. And that could have just been a piece of dirt stuck in the gears. You notice that I cleaned them while, I had, while we had it apart. Well, hey guys, as I sit here late at night editing this video for you, we're just going to have to wait till next time to see if all this works out. Until then, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there. And God bless.